What about a pastor? Should there be a pastor position? Yes, there should be. Another movement that you'll see a lot in the house church thing, the modern charismatic liberal house churches, they'll try to el eliminate any kind of leadership within the church. Uh, that's wrong. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3, Titus chapter 1, um, you'll see it in there. This thing of an elder and a bishop, a pastor. Okay, a pastor is to take the oversight of the flock. Usually, the man who's the most experienced scriptures, that doesn't mean necessarily that he has to be the oldest. Paul told Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. Sometimes you'll get a younger man who knows the Bible very well, who has better leadership qualities, and his position is not to control people, not to keep other people down. No, his position is to be the overseer. And I do believe on, you know, in the thing of praying for him when you, when you pick the man in your group that's the most experienced, no women uh, should be preachers, but you pick the man that's the most experienced and you lay hands on him and you pray for him and you say, God, equip brother so-and-so for the work of being the overseer of this flock. And then it's up to him to make, to oversee things, to say, okay, I think we should do this or I think we should do that. He doesn't become the dictator. It's still... The whole church has to agree on things, but there should be that position there of a pastor, okay? That it is a scriptural position. Don't fall for the charismatic modern lie of everybody's on the same level. You're not, okay? There are some that are more experienced, that have, that have been in the Bible longer, that know doctrine better, okay? So the pastor position is something that is there. All right, the final section here I want to talk about the future. What is the future of the church of Jesus Christ? Well, you don't have to look very hard at the news to see that there's a lot of people that hate Christians right now. And that anti-Christian sentiment, the anti-Christ spirit, is growing by leaps and bounds. There are a lot of people that want to silence Bible-believing Christians. They don't want you passing out tracts. They say that you're hate mongers, that you're bigoted, narrow-minded, Bible thumpers. You'll get a lot of names thrown at you. So what is the future of the church? Well, you're going to see more and more persecution coming to true Christians, the ones that refuse to compromise. Okay, now, of course, the Bible teaches, and I have sermons on this that you can hear. The Bible does teach that the church will be removed before the Antichrist shows up. Okay, listen to my sermons at sermonaudio.com. But uh, when the tribulation does come, there will be people that are going to be left behind. And maybe this video here will be in your hands years down the road from now in the great tribulation. Maybe you weren't saved. Maybe you realized that you weren't saved after the rapture hit, after you were left here. And maybe you're watching this now and uh, wondering what to do. Well, in the Great Tribulation, if you are in it, uh, you better stay away from the churches because the churches are going to be worshiping the Antichrist. So stay away from the churches. And today, I would say that most of the churches you want to stay away from too, before the rapture. Okay, right now, in uh, May of 2010, as I'm doing this video, most churches are corrupt. You go down through the city or whatever, and you see the churches and the steeples and things, most of them aren't preaching the King James Bible. So I'd stay away from those churches. Uh, but the fulfillment, the full fulfillment of this destruction of the church is coming. Um, it says here, Jesus says in Luke 18, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. That's a pretty significant statement. And that tells you that the, that the direction of the churches is down. Churches aren't getting better right now. They're getting worse. John 16, verse 2. 
says, They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. So you see, organized religion is going to eventually start to kill believers. And I believe the full fulfillment, this could happen, a little bit of this could actually come before uh, the rapture. We're headed that way. But the full fulfillment there, you see it's about the synagogues, the Jews, the restoration of Israel has already happened as a nation, but as God's people, that is fully going to come to pass in the coming time of Jacob's trouble. Listen to the other messages. I can't get into it here. But in that time period, organized religion, people that are thinking that they're doing God's service, they're going to be killing believers. That's the future. Now, how does that relate to the house church? Well, obviously, the believers in, the, in that time period and the believers in the future are going to have to be meeting in secret, not in open, run, government 501c3 churches. You're going to have to get out of that and get into real, true, scriptural house churches. Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, interesting number, says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, this is in the tribulation after the rapture, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not avenge, judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled." So the future is definitely, without a doubt, going to see the persecution and execution of believers. You must return to house churches. Okay? It's going to come to a point in time here, in America especially, where it is not going to be safe to go to the government-incorporated churches. And you're going to see a mass exodus away from government incorporated churches back to the house church, the scriptural house church. You know, there was a time here in America, back actually when I was a boy, back in the late 1970s, that uh, there was really no such thing as um, homeschoolers. There were a few here and there, you know, you'd hear of one or two, and it was kind of, people thought, oh, it's kind of strange, you know, homeschool? But now look at it. There are a lot of homeschoolers. And why? It's because the public schools are rotten to the core. The public schools are government indoctrination centers where they're brainwashing children. They're teaching them global warming. They're teaching them uh, gun control. They're teaching them that American sovereignty is bad. I wouldn't send a child to public school today. But you see, that's going to be the same movement as it is with the church. Right now, house churches are kind of looked down on, oh, that's kind of weird. But the time is coming, and by the way, the big incorporated churches are messed up right now. They're doctrinally very bad. And so more and more people, more and more true believers that the Holy Spirit speaks to, they're starting to realize this is corrupt, this is crooked. They go to meet with the pastor, the pastor says, I'm not changing. What do you do? return to the house church as the Bible intended, as the Bible says that the early Christians did. Okay? And you're going to start seeing that mass exodus from the churches, the incorporated churches, to the house church. Okay? And of course, Christians should not be coming together, as we discussed earlier. We shouldn't have centers of Christianity spread across the United States and nothing in between. Christians should stay in their local communities and have small house churches and get the work done in their local communities. You shouldn't move, uproot your family and move someplace to go to a good church. Stay in your community, start a house church, and get the tracting done. You be that ministry of reconciliation in your community. Okay, and also, Satan will have a difficult time infiltrating a true Bible-believing house church. And of course, I cover that in the message about the idea of being in one accord 
and I strongly recommend that. I don't, I don't recommend having your church open to anybody who wants to come. I think that you should talk to them first. Because Satan has sent in, you can study the Jesuits and how that they have been trained to infiltrate Christian churches. And they have done it. And you see Roman Catholicism being accepted in most of the mainline big churches now. It's because they have been infiltrated. And now, a lot of times, you have closet Catholics or Jesuits. You have them many times now in control of the big churches. Not only are they 501c3 government corporations, but they're also controlled many times by unbelievers. Okay? Very, very bad thing that's going on. Also, another point is the economy. Right now, the economy is falling apart. Unemployment in Detroit, Michigan, uh, in certain parts, is 50%. Nationwide, it's almost 20%. It's getting bad. How can we continue as Christians, as Bible believers, how can we continue to support big churches that drain the income of God's people? We can't afford tracts. We can't afford videos. We can't afford to do things for the Lord. We can't afford to give out Bibles because we have a mortgage payment this month. See, that's not of the Lord. And as the economy gets worse and worse and worse, and it's going to, they have to wreck the economy to bring in the Mark of the Beast system, the cashless society. Again, that's another study. But as it gets worse, these buildings are not going to be sustainable. There's going to come a point in time where you, if you're part of a church building and you're not making your payments and you're having financial difficulty, you're going to have to get to that point in your mind where you say, this isn't sustainable. I have to get out of this thing. It's burying us financially. Go back to a house church. Return to the way God intended it. Okay? That's my best advice to you. Okay, now I just want to make a point here. Um, I have been saying some things against church buildings, and I am against them. Um, I'm not going to say it's a sin, necessarily. But I just I do want to say one thing, and that is if you have a church building someplace and you're not a corporation, not 501c3, and your building is paid off and you are able to get things done for the Lord out of that building, then stay there. If you've got a good preacher and a good bunch of Christians that get work done for the Lord, absolutely, stay there. Continue to do the work of the Lord. But if you are in debt and you are 501c3 and... The pastor is not getting the work done, then get out of there. Okay? Don't tie yourself down to a building and to financial debt.